the world's uh, your friend when you're friendly. Uh, it's just a matter of learning how to forgive and be truly friendly. Then the world becomes your friend. Not something that you have to fight against or carry a sword or anything. You know, when Jesus said, you know, things like, was quoted as saying, I did not come to bring peace but a sword. I used to say, did he really say that? <laughs> but it's more, I see it now, more the sword of, of discernment. You know, clarity, wisdom. The true and the false. One who can show us the difference between what's real and what's an illusion. Well, that's a, that's a nice sword there. I'll take that sword. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if you're bringing that sword, bring it over my way <laughs> and show me the way. So, basically, I went around and um, I started traveling and living like Jesus and the Apostles in 1991. And I was told by Jesus, you will never charge money for anything, just accept donations. Let me provide for you. Eat whatever serves, sleep wherever anybody offers you a bed or a place to stay. Don't make a fuss about it. It's like the Beatles, strawberry fields forever. There's nothing to get huff about in this world. Just be a good listener and follower and you'll see that this will be easy. And I had been raised in Christianity, so I knew all about the stories. The lilies of the field, look at them, they don't spin or toil. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven, and all things else will be added unto you. You know, this is quite familiar with Jesus' teachings. But in the Course of Miracles, Jesus was a little more explicit. He said, Les goes through this, this little saying every day, but Jesus said, Once you have accepted His plan, the Holy Spirit's plan, as the one function you would fulfill, there will be nothing else the Holy Spirit will not arrange for you without your effort. Without your effort. He will go before you, making straight your path, leaving in your way no stones to trip on, no obstacles to bar your way. Nothing you need will be denied you. Not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. Never heard that before. You need to take thought for nothing except the only purpose you will fulfill. In the Course of Miracles, that's called the promise. And let me tell you, Jesus delivers. Talk about a stand and deliver spirit. Uh, this is a spirit that, when it makes a promise, it means it. There is nothing that can stand between you and that spirit, because that's who you are. You're calling upon your own name when you call upon Christ. You're calling upon your divinity. And there's nothing that can stand against a son of God or a child of God who remembers who they are. No, no law in the world, not a typhoon or a forest fire or a hurricane, there's nothing in this world that can, can harm you when you know who you are. So I hit the road and I went, started in 1991 just being compelled to travel around and just go where I was guided and let the Holy Spirit and Jesus speak through me. And I'll just tell you one little brief parable from the beginning before I open it up. We kind of open our discussion up was, I went down to uh, Florida and I was invited by some friends that I had never met. Um, just friends of friends that invited me and a friend of mine named Beverly to go down to Miami, Florida. And we got down to Florida and I had never been to Miami, Florida. And I don't think she had, either, had been there either. And we got there and we called our friends up and they weren't home. So we said, oh, let's just go over by the ocean and park the car in a, in a park and go out and just kind of walk along the beach and get our feet wet, roll up our pants and just enjoy the, the ocean. So we did. And we went out. We were, she was really dancing and splashing in the water and she's getting all wet. And, uh, Flashing all over me, so our pants were getting kind of wet and everything. And um, on the way to the park, uh, we probably about an hour before that, uh, she was talking about, well, my job and my this and my that. And she talked about, she mentioned my car, and I said, well, you know, we really, we really don't have anything in this world. It's just props that the Holy Spirit can use for whatever purpose it is for to bring us healing. So when she said, my car, I said, well, it's actually just, the Holy Spirit's just using the car. 
When we got back from our walk along the water, we came to the parking space where the car was, and we both stood at the, on the yellow lines where the car was, and she looked and she says, it's gone. My car is gone. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, it was a Toyota Corolla and it was gone. It was packed for like five, five and a half or six weeks of travel, wallets, purse, credit cards, money, cassette tapes, uh, sleeping bag, tent. Somebody had loaned us a tent for camping while we were gone. And our Course in Miracles books and everything. I mean, it was gone. gone. <laughs> vanishing, the vanishing card. And she just was this stunned look. She just stared over me with a staggering look. Like, what now? And I, and three ideas came out of my mouth from Jesus. I just looked her right in the eye and I said, all things work together for good. There are no exceptions, except in the ego's judgment. Then there was a pause and I looked at her again and I said, nothing you need will be denied you. And I paused and looked at her again and she's just got her eyes wide open and was like, what's going on? And I said, and remember this one, everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. She was like, wow. I said, we're in for the adventure of our life. Come on, Jesus, let's see how this one plays out. So, it gives you an idea of, imagine yourself in this frame of mind, if you went out and your car was gone, and you had those kind of thoughts in your mind, when your car disappeared. Wow, you could, he could take on anything. Take my car, or use it, <laughs> it's your plan. Uh, you know, I'm going to see how this is going to work out. And it's like Les often will say, it's always going to be much better than you could ever imagine. Better than you could ever imagine. This was my second major trip. I'd already taken one trip all the way across the United States, through southwestern United States, and up California to Seattle area, and across to Wisconsin and back. So I was off with Beverly on this second trip. We started walking and all of a sudden this, uh, it was like park rangers that have a pickup truck. Uh, they saw us walking and they picked us up and they took us over there to the ranger station. They said, what are you, are you like tourists or something here? And uh, we said, well, we had some friends that invited us to come down to Miami. So we came down and they said, uh, well, what are you doing? And this is a big park. What are you doing walking along here? And then he said, well, actually, we drove into the park. <laughs> but the, the car that we were in, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Just disappeared. They said, well, come on, hop in the back. So we hopped in the back of the pickup truck. There we go to the ranger station. They're asking, starting to ask us all kinds of questions. They said, your, your car is gone? You know, it's just completely vanished and we said, yeah, and they said, well, this is Miami, we're a port city and uh, there's a lot of uh, car thievery that uh, goes on here. And one of the ladies left and she said, it's probably painted and shipped off to Jamaica by now. <laughs> thoughts, doubt thoughts, fear thoughts. Once you start to follow your intuition and the spirit, you know, the ego wants to come in with fear, fear, fear darkness, you know, to try to tempt you to think that it's not going to be a glorious adventure, but it's going to be dark, painful, difficult, struggle. And so they said, well, did you, do you have any money? Uh, well, we were out walking in the ocean and splashing around up there. Do you have, well, you do have your wallet with you. No. Uh, what about uh, your purse? No. Well, what do you have? Well, we have the clothes on, the wet clothes on our back. 